welcome back to my channel Uchima Flip Books. If you're new here, my name is Jo and I am a thriller, suspense, mystery, crime fiction, Nordic noir reader from the UK. Will I ever say those genres in the same order per video? Probably not. I'm back with another review and this time it is a book by an Icelandic author that I haven't read before. So the book that I'm reviewing is The Creek on the Stairs and this is by Ava Björg Egestotter. So, this book is the first book in a series called Forbidden Iceland, I think it's called Forbidden Iceland? Yeah, Forbidden Iceland. I've got notes alongside me. You wouldn't think so with how rambly these videos are, but uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway, tangent. So it's the first book in the Forbidden Iceland series. Um, I had never read any of her work before which I'll be honest, I'm not sure how I hadn't read them because Ava Björg Egis daughter was the winner of uh, Svart Fuglin. My Icelandic pronunciation is terrible, so I just apologise to anyone who can speak Icelandic who happens to be watching this. Um, so Svart Fuglin in English is Blackbird and that is essentially, it's a crime fiction award that has been set up by Ragnar Jonasson and Isa Sigurdottir in Iceland, um, basically to promote Icelandic crime fiction. So she was the winner of that award, which straight away I feel like should have put it on my radar, but it didn't and it's taken me a few years to read one of her books because she won it's oh like uh, what does it actually say 2018 uh so yeah i feel like somehow this passed me by when it shouldn't have done so what is this book about so the story is essentially about elmer who has returned to her childhood town of Ocanis and she has essentially left the, the big city of Reykjavik and is back in a small town trying to adjust to essentially small town life and um, starting a new job and fitting in with her colleagues and generally adjusting to being back in an environment where her parents are sort of much more involved in her life I guess. To go along with all of that life stuff Elmer finds herself investigating a murder. A body is found alongside the remote lighthouse and Elmer is one of the investigators trying to find out what happened to the woman whose body is being found. The story sort of revolves around finding out who this woman was, why she was at the lighthouse, how she ended up dead. In short, it's your classic whodunit. So what did I think? So I have read a lot of Nordic Noir, I've read a lot of Icelandic authors, um, also Icelandic authors who don't write crime fiction, just Icelandic authors in general, and this book is unlike any book that I have read before. There is something about just how haunting this book is. There are some pretty dark chapters in this book, particularly um, flashbacks because the, the story alternates between flashbacks to a young girl and her childhood and present and those flashback chapters in particular are pretty harrowing they're not written with like a shock value in terms of like I don't know a make you jump kind of shock value there isn't any one sort of particularly disturbing scene it's just every single one of the flashbacks leaves you with this just lingering sadness um i think the one of the examples um that's probably the easiest for me to give without giving spoilers in one of the chapters the young girl is um saying about going around to her friend's house and how the friend's house smells so nice and she can't understand why her own mother can't smell how bad their own house is, like she can't smell the stale ale, the cigarettes, the rotting food um, and 
it's basically the despair that this young girl feels of how even just the smell of the house is so different to that of her friends. Um, it's just things like that that just give this, like I said, this lingering sadness um, throughout the book. The flashback chapters aren't rushed. They are really nicely paced, but they also serve a purpose. So we get the backstory through these chapters, but we don't sort of like follow it up with like a high action the next chapter. There's just a nice pace throughout it. It's not highs and lows. And I think that definitely gives you more time to sort of appreciate the flashbacks and what is mentioned in them rather than it being sort of, here's the flashback, right, done, onto some high paced, like high action chapters. It's just a really healthy pace throughout the entire book so that you, you fully get time to comprehend everything that has been said. I think it's very clear from my reviews. I am all about the characters. I love a well thought out character and character development and this book was full of them. Every single character was different but very believable and we got the backstory through like sprinkles of backstory throughout the book. There was never just a like paragraph or two that is like here's everything you need to know about this character that's relevant. It wasn't done like that, it was more of a here's a little bit of information, here's a little bit of information about that one. Um, Elmo herself has moved to back to her childhood town because her relationship has ended. We don't find out a huge amounts about that um, because at the times it's not relevant and it's when it does become relevant that's when you're given the information so everything felt very thought out without overwhelming with backstory that was irrelevant. It was really nice that it didn't detract from the overall narrative by giving us the backstories. It was always just incorporated into the narrative. There are time jumps in this book, obviously I've spoken about the flashbacks, and there are also multiple narrators. But unlike other books I've read this year that have that same sort of style, these are so well done. Um, they are not confusing, they flow nicely, it's just a really well done piece of writing. I wouldn't say that this was an unput downable book, but it wasn't like a chore to read it. It was just, there was so much going on in the chapters. I felt sometimes that I just needed to take a break um, because they were quite full on. Um, but it was never a, oh, I don't really want to read it. I always wanted to know what was happening. I just needed to make sure I was setting myself enough time because they're not chapters that you can whiz through. They, they are ones that you need to concentrate a bit more on what you're reading. And so for that, I would say it wasn't unput downable, but it wasn't put downable. I realize I just contradict myself there, but yeah, it's that like the happy medium of it. Like I looked forward to reading it, but I wasn't going out of my way to grab 10 minutes here and there to read it because I knew that I needed to dedicate more than just 10 minutes to a quick chapter, if that makes sense. Very much enjoyed it and would definitely recommend this book. I gave it four out of five stars and I will be getting the next book in the series to carry on reading because I feel very invested after just one book in the character of Elma. That's, I think, the, the biggest compliment you can kind of give to a book um, is if the main character of it has pulled me within, within one book and I want to read more then it's a good book in my view so that's four out of five would recommend and I'm also really happy that I've got another Icelandic author that I can buy books of and enjoy because Icelandic authors are my favourite so happy days uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read this book and what you thought of it and thanks for watching. If you liked the video give it a thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't, all that jazz and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more book ramblings from me. Thanks for watching, bye!